This is David Johnson with Backstage OL, and I'm here with Catherine Tabor for Haven's End. Thank you, Catherine, for joining us today. I hope you and your family are doing well. Yeah, thanks. I'm so excited to be here with you, and my family's awesome. doing well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> no problem. It's 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 a wild time right now, so we're making sure everybody's okay, staying safe. That's all that matters. It's totally, absolutely true. Yeah, and blessedly, we are. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so for, for Haven's End, before we get to it, I am a huge fan of the Clone Wars, and I am a huge fan of how you portrayed uh, Padme in the Clone Wars. And I wanted to ask a question for those seeing you know, voice acting versus actual acting on screen is that, could you speak about the differences in conveying emotion between, you know, being in the voice booth versus actually physically having to show that emotion on stage, on set? Well, absolutely. But first I have to see, like I always put something on this shelf for yes. the interview and I don't know why, but I felt compelled <laughs> to do this. So <laughs> that's awesome. So thank you so much, because obviously um, Padme on The Clone Wars is not only probably my my best known role, but it's also the one closest to my heart. Um, and so anytime people appreciate my portrayal of her, it means a lot to me. Um, so thank you. Uh, but also, you know, it kind of goes into the whole answer to your question, which is for me, I didn't start as a voice actor. Uh, I started as an on-camera actor. I just mm -hmm. happened to get some really cool voiceover work Star Wars um, early on. And so that's kind of what I was known for. So I've always approached it the same way, um, emotionally. And mm -hmm. it's been interesting getting to work with um, some people, for instance, on the Clone Wars who were strictly voiceover actors and some of the best voiceover actors on the planet, people like Corey Burton, who does not do on camera, he just does voice. Mm -hmm. and, to, and to watch him be able to sit in a chair barely move his body and go between zero the hut and cad bane yeah. and, and i you can even see me doing it right now so i coming from the on-camera thing i'm expressive and i can't tell you how many times i would like be saying something and i'd hit the podium we're like you, you know you don't have to move as much but emotionally for me it's always about character um mm -hmm. it's always about what is this character who are they what are they feeling um and that aspect of acting has always come really naturally to me uh, and that's one of the things I enjoy the most. So with something like Haven's End, it's just kind of the same thing that I do behind the microphone, um, just with some extra tools. <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, you're, you're speaking of Haven's End, your character, Allie, in the movie, uh, she she's a character who sees danger and then just runs towards it, right. you know, and sometimes it can be nervous doing that sometimes you're kind of stand off towards doing that type of act or these type of end time situations uh right. how important is that quality to you to see to be the person to see what's going on see that something bad is happening but see the person that needs help in that moment and rush towards them yeah that is such a cool question i mean especially in these times and the character of allison is she's a doctor so she's literally a first responder um who you know we've all been really thankful for in these times um and my sister is actually a nurse so i was calling her with a lot of questions to try to not not look like i had no idea what i was doing when it came to medical stuff if you look closely you will see it looks like i don't know what i'm doing but hopefully for for most of the audience you get fooled um but yeah, I, but that quality is actually uh, important to me. Um, it's actually something I love about Padme. It's, it's a reason that I love um, the things that I love, like in science fiction, uh, literature and film, like the Lord of the Rings, I, I'm drawn to the characters who see darkness. And instead of just going, well, um, yeah, I'm not going to do anything about that. Um, they, they realize that that's actually how you make the world a better place by what we do as individuals um, and trying to do the right thing in any given moment. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's definitely easier to think, oh, yeah, I'd be super brave in, you know, the end of the world situation. Um, and a lot of people wouldn't, but a lot of people are. And that's kind of these cool things that we, we get reminded of. Sometimes in tragedies, we're reminded of how awesome people can be mm -hmm. when they come together and they help each other. Um, and so I love that. I, I, I encourage everyone to like think about that before the moment happens because, <laughs> you know, decide who you want to be. Um, mm -hmm. I'm always making jokes about though for the end of the world in the zombie apocalypse, like know which friends, you know, that you want to call first and be like, hey, where are you? Let's get together. And the ones that you're like, yeah, no, we, we don't really need him right now. Yep. He's, just, he's gonna be a liability. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I, love, I love those themes, you know, of, of good versus 
uh, evil and light versus darkness and what happens in those moments. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. My, my next question was directly le leading into that is, in those types of moments, do you feel as though sometimes it's dangerous to be too trusting or to be too personable when, you know, when post-apocalyptic times inevitably come at some point, it's, you want to help that person, but then you realize like, this is humanity. And right. if you're not careful, you're not going to last very long. You think there's a danger in that? 100%. I mean, and there is, there is something, um, uh, to having an intelligence and a wisdom about all of this. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that you always have to be trying to do the right thing and also have your eyes open and protect yourself. Um, mm -hmm. So there's ways to do that. And, you know, the, the truth is, is that you do the best that you can in those situations. And occasionally, even when you're doing the right thing, um, it's not going to work out, uh, which is really sad and a bummer. But I will say about that, too, that if people only do the right thing when they're certain of the outcome for themselves, they will never do the right thing. So you always try to be wise, to be intelligent, to be very aware, um, and to keep your circle of people that you really trust close to you. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have to do the best that you can in that moment. And, you know, it's so funny because one of the things I worked on recently was one of the Walking Dead um, series, the, yes. the new one, The World Beyond. Yes. Yes. And, and I've always been such a fan of the show, The Walking Dead. Um, and I've always, you know, been like, well, what would I do? Uh, and so <laughs> to get to be a part of the universe and to play a character who is different than me and to be like, well, wh why would she be this way? What about this would have caused her to, to be this way? It was fascinating. Um, and yeah, like these situations bring out things and people. Um, but I think that again is why, you know, really cultivating who you are and the kind of person that you want to be on a daily basis in the little ways, being kind to people that you encounter just at the post office or yeah. you know, when we yep. can go to the post office. And all of those things mean that when you know stuff really gets bad, you've already trained those muscles of, of being kind, but also being wise. Great, that's a very great answer. I'm glad you mentioned The Walking Dead because I'm caught up so now I can watch the world beyond. So I'm really excited about that. What do you think compels and pushes people to continue to persevere, even though things may seem bleak or dark in that moment. And I know you spoke a little bit about that hope, but do you yeah. think ultimately there is hope, but do you think there's something else that kind of drives people towards persevering on? I mean, I think that the the human soul um, is what drives people. And I am a person of faith. I know mm -hmm. that not everyone is, but I actually still, I personally, you know, because of my faith, believe that we all have that kernel inside of us of wanting something more, something deeper, a, a bigger purpose, a bigger meaning for life. Um, and I think that comes out in those situations. And also sometimes, you know, what that translates to is love. Um, love for your family. Mm. Some, you know, you see people do the most amazing, brave things and sacrificial things for people that they love. Um, I mean, and, you know, and again, you go back to Star Wars and you can talk about Anakin. Like, you know, Anakin doesn't turn to the dark side. Oh, spoiler alert. Sorry. <laughs> um, Anakin doesn't turn to the dark side, really, because he's just trying to gain power for his own edification. He is doing it out of love. And wanting to protect the things that he loves um and so those are the things that drive us i think when we're at our best even though it doesn't work out so well for him i know <laughs> or me for that matter <laughs> <laughs> that's true uh my last question is always in in the post-apocalyptic genre i always have my favorite question that i ask people especially you yourself being you know in the world of the walking dead is where would you hold up or hunker down in those inevitable whenever when the thing hits the fan and you have to decide to stay home go in a bunker find a walmart or find heb which is here in texas like where were you, where would you go in those situations where you have to figure out where can i be safe at where can i have my family or my friends safe in one location okay first though i have to ask what is agb oh i'm so glad you asked <laughs> agb is the texas equivalent of many other stores, Texas equivalent of Walmart or Kroger's okay. or Sam's Club. Okay. It's, it's that just because it's in Texas, it's bigger, 
and quote okay. unquote better. That, yes. <laughs> that's what it is. It's funny. I love Texas. It's my second favorite state after Georgia. Um, and so I was just like, wait, I've been to Texas a lot. How have I never heard of an AGB, but I've never ah. really been there like where I was doing any kind of normal regular shopping for anything oh, okay. so that makes sense so now you've saved me because next time i'm in texas i'm going to be like where's, where's the agb um, yep. you know <laughs> um but to your question what's kind of cool about that is it takes us back to haven's end um in the sense that where uh, the character of allison and her friends go is they leave the city and they head out somewhere remote and rural mm -hmm. and and honestly right now um you know if that if that was what was going to happen here um my plan would would probably be to go to somewhere in the north georgia mountains um you know um i'd like to actually someday be able to buy the property um mm. and uh and not necessarily use it for the end of the world but maybe just to raise horses and some goats because mm -hmm. that sounds really nice <laughs> and, <laughs> and maybe grow some grapes so i can make my own wine yeah um, this yeah. is just my this is my whole like dream life plan <laughs> that i'm telling you to answer your end of the world question um but yeah i think that's where i would go i think uh i i i doubt you know, I mean, you don't always have a choice. Like you might be stuck in your house um, mm -hmm. when the zombies come and hopefully your neighbors are well fortified. Um, yes. my, mine are actually so, okay, actually good. pretty good. <laughs> I apologize. Uh -oh. sorry, wait one second. Is, is that yeah, it? There's a, there's, yeah, there's a fire, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm like, is that, is it happening as we're talking about it? <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> okay, but before, but sent, you know, since you asked that question, I actually have to ask you, what's your answer? AGB? It, it's... <laughs> It's hard for me as someone who I grew up on the East Coast. I grew up in New Jersey and Philadelphia, so I wouldn't immediately go to HEB. Um, we, we spoke about it a little bit earlier is that I being on the East Coast and seeing how people normally interact with each other. Right. I know how people can get towards the end times where things get difficult. Yeah. So my answer would be it's great to go to Walmart and get supplies, but I'm 100 percent on board with you and yeah. get the stuff that you need and get out of civilization and yeah. kind of set yourself apart yeah. because the farther away you are the more you're able to hunker down for the longer amount of time right and i just things may get too wild if i wanted to stay in atlanta you know right. that's why in the walking dead they leave atlanta they leave the city because it's too dangerous right. Right. to stay in that environment although i do think if you're going to be in any state georgia or texas you're you're going to run into nicer people who are like do you have all the ammo you need you good? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to run into people who are well armed as well, too. So you yes. could survive a little bit longer. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, Catherine, thank you for your time today. Thank you for stopping by. We really appreciate it. I cannot wait to see you in your next project. And I thank cannot you. wait to go back and rewatch The Clone Wars now that I've talked to you and be able to figure out and see how you act emotionally on screen and off screen. That's awesome. And now Disney Plus makes it easy. So exactly. <laughs> thank you for your time. You have a great day. Thank you. You too. Happy New Year. You too.